All right, looks like we're going live on Facebook. Okay, we're live on Facebook. Do you want to flip the host back to me, Linda? <clears throat> All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming on today. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving and an amazing time with your um friends and loved ones and relatives and that you just um, were able to give thanks. That was what the whole idea was, isn't it? Giving thanks. So I actually had uh, my two sons here and they are here with me today, both of them, so that you can see them. This is uh, Joseph from the Nashville area and uh, John who is from Dayton, Tennessee. So they're both Tennessee guys. They grew up in Bolivar, Missouri and left to go to college and stayed in Tennessee. So anyway, they're officially on board with the Wave Watch and I'm just so excited to uh, have both of them on today and uh, front and center. I think they've both been on before, but maybe not front and center. So anything else that we wanna add? Did you find that picture, John? Yes, I've, I've sent it over. I've, um... You may see if I can. Well, I don't know if I can find it or not. You You're could also so screen share it. Yeah. If you want, but it's okay. If you have a screen share, that would be great. Oh, well, I'll see what I can do here. I'll screen share it in a second. So John is looking at finding a picture that we just thought about at the last minute, but this is one of my favorite images of my two sons. And th this was taken uh, hiking in Tennessee. Can it get any better than this? This is an actual picture. Nothing was added or changed to it. That's exactly how the picture came out with the rays of light. So we're talking about energy today. So don't you think there was some energy going on there? Uh, I have this on, on the wall in my office, and that's why it just energizes me all the time. And now it's super exciting that uh, both uh, Joseph, and sometimes I call him JR, Joseph Robert. Uh, it's so exciting that both and both of them are on board with me. And then David John Baker also. So, uh, oh, I should have uh, mentioned that Pepita was also in the picture. So anyway, thanks, John, for sharing that. That worked well. <clears throat> so I don't know that we have anything else to add. I uh, have a program uh, working with you today for uh, seasonal affective disorder. Is there anything you two need to say before I go ahead and start or, or share my screen? No, other than uh, we're we're excited to be a, a part of this and uh, excited to hear about this because uh, as the days get shorter um, and for some reason more cloudy, I think this is something that a lot of people are dealing with, uh, myself included sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's it's great to talk about this subject. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'll be moderating questions. So just if you have questions as she goes along, just type them in the Q&A or you can raise your hand. Uh, but Q&A is a little bit easier to deal with. And then uh, we'll get to them as we can. Okay, thanks. Um, Joseph, we also had one more idea. Uh, we can share this now and also towards uh, the middle or the end. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, we actually uh, talked about donating watches to veterans. And we had asked for some uh, nominations or recommendations. And so Joseph will put the um, link in so that you can nominate somebody. We have about 50 watches still that we could give away probably. So if you know anybody, please recommend them. And we do need their email so that we can track those packages to make sure that they get those. So make sure that you uh, give us the you know full address, name, um, yeah, just fill out the form that has all that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make sure you get that filled out so that we can send those to them. And, you know, the sooner we get them, the closer they will get them before Christmas. And maybe it'll be a, the special Christmas bonus that, and surprise that they need. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll see where we're at on um, seasonal affective disorder. <laughs> so.
So um, basically, some of you have been on here before and some of you have not. So we may repeat occasionally. And uh, I appreciate that you bear with us. Some of you are seasoned veterans of using the Wave Watch and have had several different uh, versions of it as we kept adding frequencies. The watch itself didn't change much, but just the fact that we had more frequencies on there. So we're now up to a thousand different settings and we're gonna be highlighting uh, frequencies today about seasonal affective disorder. So uh, this is what you would get when you get a Wave Watch. In the mail, you are going to get the watch itself. And please pay attention right here. We thought we had this uh, taken care of where there'd be a little sticker here that says, peel me off. But for some reason, we're still, that sticker is still not on here. So when you get your watch, you will see just a little tiny tab right here and you peel this film off. And then you put this one, you peel the fi film off of this screen protector and put it on and then make sure that you work it out from the center out to the edges to put your official screen protector on. And sorry to say, sometimes people think that their watch is used really because this is scratched up. That's the whole idea. This is to protect your screen in shipping. So make sure that you're peeling this off and putting this on. So that's probably one of our bigger problems that we're having. And then uh, you are going to get a, um, obviously, a charging cord and the charging brick. You'll get your own carrying case and uh, a wristband that can be either leather or the uh, Velcro one is coming with, with it. We've had so many positive responses for the Velcro one that we may just have the uh, leather one available just uh, part-time or on request. And then don't forget that you have a 24-page um, booklet with all the information in it. And please try to read that and keep that handy so that you can use it. It makes it a little bit easier to have a booklet to see things quickly. And then the main thing about the Wave Watch is that there are targeted frequencies, thousands of targeted frequencies. And I have to kind of uh, take a deep breath when I tell this, but I visited with a company that had developed what they were uh, insinuating was a med bed. And it really was a large lounging type chair that you laid on. And they said it had every frequency that you could think of. It had thousands of frequencies. And when you laid on it, it just um, buzzed and you know made this sound. And when I got up from laying on it, I was literally dizzy and uh, nauseated. And this person actually said about the Wave Watch, when he saw the Wave Watch, he said, oh, you put targeted frequencies on there. So basically, these frequencies are working a little bit quicker than when you're just bombarded with every frequency in the world. They are targeted. So I hope you appreciate that. We also have no cords. We have uh, no wires or patches. So that is very important to me. And most important, I'm not sure why it's jumping. Most important, we have no internet connectivity. It's very, very important that we do uh, not uh, have negative frequencies connected to our body. I consider this cost effective. Everybody has a budget, but hopefully you'll see when you look around that this has a lot of frequencies for the cost. And these are easy to update. We have a new update with a new um, SD card. And so that's something that, that can be updated easily. We try to use the equipment that we have and not throw everything away, you know. And so the last idea about the Wave Watch is that it's useful for ages, uh, for all ages, and even animals, lots of stories. So it doesn't matter whether it's a four-year-old or a 90-year-old. I have testimonies from all of those, plus testimonies about dogs and cats and llamas and ducks, different things, horses, the list goes on and on. So you can use the Wave Watch for several different purposes. Now today and this uh, month, basically, obviously we're in Christmas season and what better way to celebrate than to celebrate with frequencies in my opinion. So this statement came from Albert Einstein and he's saying concerning matter, we've all been wrong. What we have called matter is energy. 
whose vibration has been so lowered as to be perceptible to the senses. There is no matter. Interesting. All matter beings vibrate at specific rates and everything has its own melody. The musical nature of nuclear matter from atoms to galaxies is now finally being recognized by science. So let's celebrate with frequencies. We already started out with a favorite picture of uh, my sons, and it's all about frequencies. You can just see them glowing, and maybe some people even saw the angel frequencies in the background, and then the frequencies uh, from this uh, light uh, going around us. So we are celebrating this month and every month with frequencies. We are in a musical galaxy. So here's some things that I found that I thought might be very helpful with um, the Christmas season, and it really spoke to me. Um, and this is from Jill Gottenstratter, if I'm saying her name correctly. And she says that we need to be merry and bright. Of course, our holidays do. And I think we've kind of forgotten some of this because we are so into um, our cell phones and texting and, you know, uh, some things like that. We are uh, social media. It goes on and on. I was around some young ones at the holidays and they were not really visiting with anybody. They were sitting there on their cell phone. And that was very sad for me. So I hope that you are able to kind of reach out maybe in what you think is an older manner of communicating this season. But let's mail some cards once in a while. Let's get our holidays merry and bright. Let's, you know, do something a little bit different. And I am very much taking this to heart because I haven't mailed things very good or sent letters for several years. So I want to make sure that I try to do be better about that. And how about visiting people? There's lots of people in nursing homes and uh, neighbors, you know, some people right beside us that could actually use some friendliness. You know, my favorite spot is the post office <laughs> because I visit with people there. They're holding the door open for me and helping me with my packages. And the friendliness is unbelievable. But let's get our friendliness up. Let's get our energy up. All right. We could also serve. I know you can read this as well as I can. And maybe you can add some more ideas later in the, or in the chat. But why not get engaged, you know, being uh helping with someone, with something, serving a meal or whatever you need can be very, very powerful. Maybe invite someone to do something special to a different idea, something that you have never done before. Take somebody with you, even somebody out for coffee that you haven't done before. This is the season to do it. Um, and then remember, don't let the out of sight, out of mind, leave your loved ones feeling behind. So there's lots of people that we could reach out to in different ways. We could send more packages. Again, I'm very um, slow anymore about getting my packages sent. And so I need to kick up the holidays and be very merry and bright. And then, of course, we do want to uh, practice compassion and reach out to those people who've lost loved ones. And there's so many people who are suffering. And if we don't maybe up our game, the next problem that we're going to have is somebody that could be our neighbor or our best friend or our relative or somebody who's in a nursing home who comes up with seasonal affective disorder. Um, this is something that affects so many people, and we'll be showing some statistics on the next slide, but we have higher depression, we have people with lower energy, they have a loss of interest in their whole lives and people around them, um, they have changes in appetite, uh, they might eat too much or not enough, you know, and they are sleeping too much. So these are some basic ideas about some of the seasonal affective disorder that can start uh, crippling our population if we don't work on some of the things that I mentioned before, reaching out and being compassionate people. And of course, I mentioned it during the holiday season, but we should be that way all the time. So hopefully you are uh open to being more involved with people around you. 
This is why the whole program today is on seasonal affective disorder. So I did not realize that more people are affected who are 18 to 30, you know? So a lot of our younger population really suffers the seasonal affective disorder, but anyone can be effective, affected by it. Um, 10 million Americans are affected. So that's a huge amount of our population. And then another one to two million could have some episodes. But look what's scary, 6% can require hospitalization from this very idea. What about the next statistic? I know you're reading along with me or I hope you are. Fewer than 40% of people actually seek help. They may be seeking help just by talking to you as a neighbor. So that's why it's so important for us to be able to reach out. So, um, yeah, I, I not, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, this was uh, pre COVID. I know these numbers have gotten a little bit worse uh, during that time of isolation. And so I just think, too, it's important. Um, you know, one of the biggest things is obviously taking care of your your mental health and community, but just sunshine and being outside. And like you're saying, being with people. And sometimes uh, we get so addicted to our screens and our phones that we forget to be outside and be with people. And that's a great lifestyle change. Yes. And we have to work on that because it is going back to a lifestyle that we used to have that has changed drastically. And then you'll, you'll see, obviously, the reason we're kicking this off, December through February are the most severe months for, uh, for SAD. Uh, and if you already have somebody in your family with a depression uh, issue, uh that may put the pressure on you just a little bit more. And so people tend to be more depressed, especially if they have depressed uh, family members. And then women, four to one gals, hey, we got to get busy. You know, we got to take care of ourselves better. Uh, we tend to be the caretakers in our family a lot. And here all of a sudden, we have a four to one ratio of depression and sadness and uh, seasonal affective disorder. Um, Look at this statistic, 350 million people worldwide. And like Joseph has already pinned, print, pointed out, these figures were 2018. But I just thought this was a wonderful chart all in one screen, you know. Um, look at this, 60 to 80 percent are treatable. And we're going to show you some ways with the Wave Watch today that you can work on this. Um, there might be some al alcohol abuse in families. Uh, 34% of people could be affected by that, and that could bother them and cause the SAD connection. And then 6.7% uh, of adults have suffered a major depressive episode. So it is a huge problem. I could go on and on about these statistics, but 50% of, of people ages 12 to 17 said they sought, you know, professional help for depression. So it is something that is definitely affecting our young people. And again, they tend to be the ones who are on their computers and their laptops and cell phones, maybe more than our uh, older people. I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not, but I'm certainly not a fan of being on your cell phone all the time. So these were some things that we could do uh, the number one suggestion was light therapy, and there were several kinds of lights. And, uh, you know, you would look at those. Uh, they are fairly expensive. I was a little bit surprised on some of the costs of those. So anywhere, I think I saw some from 60 to $350, you know, and it's just a light. So you would want to look at those. But you can also up your vitamin D. You can make sure your sleep timing is better. You can exercise, you can diet, you know, make sure that your diet is a little bit better. Um, make sure that it's uh, full of green leafy vegetables and, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And how many times have we heard about our diet? We're probably tired of hearing some of these simple things like sleep, get better sleep, exercise, diet, you know, take, a, take your prescription that you've been recommended and then go out in the sun. Now the sun is a terrific one. Again, I am saying 
We are not outside as much as we are used to. We're not reaching out to people. We're not taking walks with people as much. We are tending to be inside more. So to me, the number one suggestion would be sunlight. We need to get out in the sun. And as the winter months come along and the days are shorter, it's harder and harder. So we tend to have more and more problems with SAD as the season progresses. But these were some suggestions, but we have another suggestion for you today. We do have frequencies on the wave watch for emotions and specifically SAD. So any of these emotions could be helpful for you to use. There's quite a few ideas here. The list goes on and on. So we have um, frequencies for anxiety. We have frequencies for, you know, just bipolar problems, combat disorders. You see the ones for depression, depressive dis disorder. How about detox mental disorders? Isn't that a huge one? Couldn't we all use that? Uh, I play that one quite a lot. <laughs> I go through different ideas. Um, dissociative disorders, emotional balance, even something that just says balance. How do we know that some of these would not be helpful to make sure that we do not have the larger overall problem with SAD? So we have frequencies for emotions and sleep. If your sleep is out of balance, there's three different choices there. Emotions and sleep one, sleep two, and sleep three. And all that means is that those were measured by a different uh, company or that they um, there were several frequencies. There were too many to put in one group. Most of these are about 30 frequencies. And so there were evidently not, almost 90 frequencies for emotions and sleep. So that's why they are divided into different categories. And again, I, I've said this and I repeat myself, but when something is numbered and separated, you know, sleep one, two, and three, uh, it's just like a different song for the same problem. Or you're listening to Elvis and he's got three different songs. Well, you listen to them all, you know, it's not going to hurt you to listen to all of those songs, but you might like one more than the other and your body might react to it a little bit more. Okay, we have frequencies for mental clarity, OCD, phobic disorders. And then on the next page, you'll see that we have uh, PTSD, schizophrenia. And then here's the main one, seasonal affective disorder. This is the one that we're really talking about today and trying to uh, work with it behind the scenes because the statistics on SAD that I've already showed you are really somber. They're really sobering is another way to say it. And we have so many problems. So here's a few more ideas. Self-image balance, sleep disorders, maybe stammering, stuttering, Tourette syndrome. All of those could lead to deeper emotional problems. So at this season, it's a great idea to make yourself a playlist or to maybe play through all of these ideas, many different ways to do it. And everybody's a little bit different. That's why one pill does not fit everybody. And that's why the frequencies are so nice because you can choose and it just takes seconds to do them. And to me, it's a lot easier than taking a pill. I was taking a few standard process nutrients this morning and oh my goodness, you know, um, it, it took me a while to get them out and get the pills counted and, and that kind of thing. So it's to me easier to just touch a button on the Wave Watch and play what I'm interested in. Just another idea that I had from NBC News, this chart is showing about those, you know, 12 to 17 year olds. This one chart was specifically made to, for 10 to 24 year olds, but this group uh, has been really um, at risk. So suicide is the second leading cause of death among young people aged 10 to 24. So um, it's huge. So all of these emotional frequencies and working with um, 
our loved ones, being around people, stepping out, using some of those ideas that I mentioned earlier, just visiting with people, doing something different are very, very important at this time of year. So be protective. Talk, make sure that you are talking to your, the young ones around you and the young ones that you love and maybe other ones that uh, you don't know quite as well, but it doesn't hurt us to reach out. Now, I've showed this before, but again, we have new people every week. And just in case you haven't seen this, this is a thermography. And this is a camera that I've, I've used for uh, 15 years now. And it's a heat seeking camera. And basically it shows the amount of heat that you have in your system. And it looks like one photo kind of jumbled here for me, but I had a lady that came to my office and she told me that she had PTSD. Now she is 80 some years old and I was very, very surprised. And see here again is a way that we need to interact with people because she called it PTSD. Another word for it could have been depression or you know whatever she wanted to call it. But um, I, I'm going, why? <laughs> why, why do you think you have PTSD? And her response was, it was from her great grandchildren. She was worrying about them and whatever was going on, you know. And so she tried the Wave Watch for an hour and I was able to take these three images. So here's what she looks like to start with. This is the middle picture. And you'll see that there's quite a bit of heat in her shoulders and up around her forehead at the first setting before she had used the Wave Watch. And then she used the Wave Watch for 30 minutes. And we have this second picture, which happens to be on the right. And um, you can see that that has changed drastically. So the heat, again, which is pain and inflammation, trauma, ideas. Inflammation is one of the worst things that we have in our society, according to the medical community. And you can see that that inflammation went away drastically off of her shoulders in 30 minutes. And there were a few changes on the top of her head. Now our noses and our cheeks are supposed to be this dark blue color. So this is what you're supposed to look like here, but you are definitely not supposed to have any heat or as much heat as she did. And then we'd use the wave watch another 30 minutes and took a third picture. And this is what she looked like. And there was more improvement even then. So here's the second series that I took of her, and this is a side view. So on the right-hand side, this is what she looked like to start with. And you can see all of this inflammation and redness and heat, you know, and pain, basically. So uh, we ran also inflammation, pain, and trauma, and the PTSD. And that's why all of this uh, combines together. And then you can see that in the second 30 minutes, pain went down a lot. And then the third image that I took that is on the left, that this is very much um, reduced. And so I also have a picture of her and I've showed this before, but it's kind of fun to see. Uh, I hope you'll think. And this is her little testimony. Today, my friend Linda helped me with a new program that she's working on. When I came in, I had a very stressful headache. It hurt so bad I could touch both tables. And right now, after she has worked with me, I can press on my temples and it doesn't hurt at all. The headache seems to have subsided. And it, that that's one thing. And then another thing is that uh, I feel much more relaxed. When I came in, I was under a lot of stress. And I just seem to have felt so much more relaxed, not as much tension as I had before. And in relaxing, I noted that my uh, left shoulder, under my left shoulder blade, uh, wasn't as tight and as tense as it, it had been in the past. And all in all, I think that she has a good idea. <laughs> I think I'm coming back. Let her help me with something else. Today. So I'm sorry, her voice was a little bit softer there, but you got the idea. She And we also had the three images of her. So you could tell that it really made a difference. And that was my prototype design that we were working on there. So um, 
I hope that you will realize that we do have some testimonies, tons of testimonies on emotions, but we also have some physical tests that we've done. So that's just one of them to show that emotions can change and can change what is going on for pressure in your body. So another set of uh, emotions is uh, listed under the Bach remedies. And I've explained those before. I actually have a whole hour teaching segment on Bach remedies. And these are natural plant remedies. They originally started with a plant, but we are able to measure the frequency of that plant. And so it's on the wave watch now. We don't necessarily have to have um, a cabinet full of uh, supplements or uh, natural remedies. I do have that in my house. I have a set of 40 Bach remedies, but now it's so easy for me to just touch a button to play those same remedies on my wave watch. So this particular one that I'm showing you is a combination of seven different plant ideas and they are related, uh, you know, one through seven. So these would be some easy ideas to go through also when someone is on that verge of depression, you know, depressive disorder, uh, whatever you want to call it, whether you have a label or not, hopefully you are able to reach out, you know, even by looking at your watch and see that there are some suggestions and some things that you could use. And again, don't be afraid to play more than one idea. It may not be the idea that you think that you are concerned about, but it may be the one that helps you the most. So play through lots of ideas during the next couple of months when we tend to have the SAD. We're talking about December through February. Um, just a couple more ideas that I think I think are so important. And I'm sorry that this is kind of small writing here. Maybe I should have figured out how to, how to make a you know something that flashes for us. But our circadian rhythm has been messed up when we have some of these disorders. And so we have a 24 hour clock that regulates how we function, you know, in our sleeping and waking hours and tells us that we're alert or drowsy or whatever. And so they think that the circadian clock has been uh, messed up or circadian rhythm during um, the, this season. Um, so there are seasonal changes and everybody can react differently. They also have another theory that certain hormones, which regulate the sleep, the mood, and the feelings have been messed up. And they also think that vitamin D deficiency, working with the hypothalamus, can lead to disruption in these circadian rhythms. So that's why as we dig deeper, we have so much trouble with uh, this seasonal change and the changes in light and why light is so important. So here's a couple more ideas on this uh, circadian rhythm circle. So you can see that at midnight, you know, you have a uh, low functioning, we're in deep sleep, you know, and when we wake up in the morning at about six o'clock, we have this cortisol release and we spring out of bed and, and go to work and, you know, about, uh, uh, mid morning, we're on high alert, you know, midday coordination, but this is just an idea of how this circadian rhythm cycle works and then how it can get messed up. So our temperature is the lowest at not, uh, just, uh, you know, real early in the morning, looks like maybe two to four. Uh, our heart, highest blood pressure is in the evening. Uh, we have more melatonin secretion. Um, later at night, maybe in the 10 o'clock time frame. And so these get out of order. So these are huge. This is telling us that this is what's messed up. So we can break that down and help ourselves a little bit more with the wave watch besides playing the seasonal affective disorder phrasing and all of the ideas for specific uh, types of emotions that I just listed. We can also play the pineal gland. Now, this one happens to be, I, I don't want to use the word hidden, but it might be a little bit harder to find. It is in the weight folder. 
So you could also take this pineal gland and some people say it pineal and some pe people say pineal because it looks like a pine cone. And so you think you're saying it right when you say pineal. And then the next time you look somewhere, that person is saying it pineal gland, you know, or pineal gland. So that's a fun one to pronounce, in my opinion. So anyway, um, the this gland is so much affecting the circadian rhythm. And that's why it's so important. And see, you can even see at the bottom that the secretion of melatonin is affected by light exposure to the eyes. So if we're not getting enough light, if we're not outside, which we're not, we stay inside so much all the time now that we can have more and more trouble with this. So it is in the weight folder because it has so much to do with our uh, endocrine system, but it could also uh, be... I, maybe I should should have put it in the emotional folder. That's what my husband Carl tells me. Oh, you need to get that particular one in the uh, emotion folder. It is a huge one. So please play that one. Go to that one and find it and play that one and circle around. Maybe even play it, uh, you know, six hours or something like that. And also what happens, and just to throw this out to you, is that we are slow learning about this gland. It is so small. It's the size of a grain of rice. It's hidden kind of in the middle of our brain up, up between up this direction, way down inside. But um, they are actually saying that this gland calcifies and that they actually use it on x-rays. They use it as a marker, you know, to see uh, other areas in the brain. So we are filling up with calcium and calcifying. We have calcium in our breasts. We have calcium in our kidneys. We have calcium in our brain in this particular gl gland. And it gets worse usually as we age. And so now they are connecting this gland um, and calcification with Alzheimer's, with migraines, cl cluster headaches, the list goes on and on, Parkinson's. So um, they don't know a lot about it. And they keep saying more studies need to be done. But just to let you know, this gland does calcify. So what they think calcifies it more is the fluoride and chloride. So, or chlorine. So we have to do our own work on this and make sure that we are keeping fluoride out of our toothpaste, out of our water, anything that you, you know, anything else that it might be. in. it's very, very important to keep that out of our system so that it does not affect this gland because this gland affects our whole life, basically. So, um, even schizophrenia, I see, can be uh, affected. So we're talking about those emotions, just what we're talking about today. So the fluoride and chlorine can be very, very problematic, and it causes problems. People, um, I, did, I didn't go into a lot on how uh, the this particular gland is also considered to be the third eye. And uh, there are so many connections with um, spiritualism and working with this particular gland and getting this decalcified. And I think I, you know, I could have done a little bit more on that, but didn't want to go into that too much because there are so many other things, but it is very much connected with our emotions. So it is very important that we make sure that our uh, gland, the pineal or the pineal gland is decalcified and that you are working on that. So um, just another chart that I uh, found that I wanted to just emphasize again is that emotions all through this Christmas season can be so harmful to our body. So we need to make sure that we are playing all of those emotional folders, not just the SAD ones, but if you'll see, you know, anger fires at the heart and the liver, shock attacks your kidney, anxiety affects digestion, fear affects the adrenals and the kidneys both, stress weakens your heart and your brain, <laughs> and worry weakens the stomach, 
sadness weakens your lungs. And there could be so many other little connotations. But I think that just kind of shows it all that our emotions, you know, we, some people, they use the phrase, they wear them on their sleeve. And sometimes that's good. You know, maybe we need to be doing more of that, letting some of these emotions out instead of holding them in. But I hope that you're using your wave watch for emotions. There are so many people who do rely on it for calming. That's what I'm playing right now is calming. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, was in a hurry this morning when I was getting ready and I thought, oh, what else do I need to put in this presentation? So, of course, I got just a little bit, you know, anxious, you know, and I just started playing it on calming and settled right down so that I could finish up a little bit of this presentation. So I hope you're using it also. Now, another idea it looks like I've been going through this at a pretty good pace, but uh, is to play through the chakras and they are right in that same area. They are in the emotional ones. And some people like chakras and some people are very skeptical of them. And I keep trying to tell you, this is just another culture and the information that they found out about frequencies. So they labeled frequencies from, you know, different areas in your body. And I think this is a good chart that shows you uh, the chakras and what they are connected with. So if you are playing the root chakra, happiness, creativity, self-confidence, you know, um, the solar one is peace, harmony, personal power. Again, these are just frequencies. So I did put together another slide to show you the exact frequency. So... These are the frequencies that are on the wave watch for the chakras. And that's all it is. It's just a frequency. So if you start at the top, this is what you have. Now, I apologize that I didn't flip this the other way, but Earth Star is probably the one to start on. And I think that's the way they're organized on the wave watch. But if you start on the lowest one and, you know, just let it go from one to the other, people have also said that that's what they do to calm down or to get their emotions in order. They are very much connected. Now, because they're only one frequency, you're not going to be able to hear them very much. So it's very important that you realize that your watch is not broken. It's just that there's just one frequency in these sets instead of 30. So they're not going to be near as loud. They're going to be very, very soft. And I hope you, you uh, connect here. Uh, the root is 432 hertz. And again, I mentioned several times that 432 Energetics is the name of my company. And, you know, it's the root. That's how I, uh, you know, looked at happiness, creativity, self-confidence, and expression. So um, anyway, I had fun picking out that name, and it's the frequency exactly for the root chakra. So hopefully you will take advantage of those. Then the list goes on and on in the emotional folder. So you'll want to take a little bit deeper look at that and make sure that you are really using all of the frequencies available for emotions that are there. We also have the sulfagio frequencies that are in the emotion folder that you could play. Right now, I just kind of want to finish up with a playlist and a suggestion that if you know somebody that's really having trouble or in the past have has, has had trouble with SAD or so many people are taking um, prescriptions or, you know, things for this particular problem. It's been recognized. If you know somebody, you could make a particular playlist for them. So these are some things I'm suggesting and exactly where it is at. So I would go to um, emotions and there are many selections. You can start with SAD, of course, depression, sleep disorders, and there's probably about 15 or 20 that you could put in there. I didn't list them all, but you know that person's personality a little bit more. You know, they might already be uh, connected with bipolar 
you know, uh, they might not, you know, so you can go through them. You might know that they're ha really having a lot of trouble with sleep. So you could add the sleep uh, one, two, and three emotions and sleep one, two, and three. So I didn't put all those down, but you can build as big a playlist as you want for yourself or for somebody that you might want to share the idea with, or maybe you invite them to your home for dinner and you, you know, you've got a, a wave watch there for them. Uh, to try. Uh, you also have a uh, hormone balance and that's probably the best one. And that's just in hormones and it would be in the men or women's folder and find hormone balance and put that in your playlist. And then you could also go to organs and brain. You could put the hypothalamus and the pituitary. Those are huge organs also for our emotions. And then in the weight folder, we have adrenal balance we have something uh, labeled emotional eating and pineal gland stimulation. And you might find a couple of other ideas too, but um, there might be addictions, could be one. And so everybody's playlist could be just a little bit different. And then uh, insomnia is another one that's in self-care. There's also, you know, sleep apnea if the person happens to have it. But these would be things that you could build for an SAD protection list because we want that SAD to go away to, you know, merry and bright. We want it to change during this holiday. We don't want anybody in that down, um, low down, low emotional. We want everybody built up. So that's what we're. I'm trying to, you know, kind of share with you today. Now I've got um, awesome. Hey, just a so, little can you video, go back? and I can stop. Yeah, I've got a little video yeah. on how. I, well, there we go. Sorry, we got several questions. So maybe can you go back to the last slide? Because um, uh, Elizabeth had asked about the circadian rhythm. You mentioned that earlier. And I see here on this slide, you've got insomnia. Are there any other ones that would be helpful for circadian rhythm? Well, the main one is the pineal gland. So okay, that's so why you want to play that. Pineal gland. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Martha had also asked if uh, playing the pineal idea can help decalcify it. I do not know on that one. I am hoping that it does because it is moving it around. But uh, I would also make sure that you are checking your fluoride and your fluoride, uh, fluorine and um, stimulating that all, you know, make sure that that is changed. It doesn't say calcification or decalcification, so I cannot guarantee that. But another idea, this might be a little bit different, is to just play the kidney stone Deca because that's what is, that is doing is decalcifying. And so when I play that, I really feel that I'm helping to decalcify my breast and uh, decalcify my brain, maybe as a way to say it. But I do not have any scientific proof on that one. Yep. Good question. Put and, me on the spot there. Yeah. And one last one on mineral deficiencies. Are there any suggestions for mineral deficiencies? No. Um, I would just take salt Seriously, I think we are so deficient in salt. It has to be an, an unrefined sea salt. And I, I have a whole program on this too. But uh, most of the salts like the, uh, the I'm, I'm trying to think which ones I really like. There's a, a Celtic or a Celtic salt. There's mm. uh, one for the uh, Himalayan salt, which is pink. And then the other one that I really like is the real salt from Utah. And all of those salts are known to have 80 minerals in them. So why are we worrying about taking a little tiny bottle and buying a, you know, a bottle of XYZ when you take salt, like we should be taking it, it has the 80 plus minerals in it. So they do know, and they've done studies from thousands of years ago that every culture in the world took between one and three teaspoons of salt every day. That was part of their lives. And yet today we throw that salt away and put it on our highways, you know? So go back to the good salt. There is not very, uh, you know, very much to do with minerals on the Weight Watch. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? I think we're good for now. We can move on. Okay. Uh, I've got just a little bit of a video on setting up your second and third um, favorites list. And I was going to do it specifically for these ideas, but I apologize. I didn't get it done. So these are some, you know, a description using some other ideas uh, than the specifically 
the specific ones on the last PowerPoint, but I think you'll still get the idea. Some people are not using their playlist two and three, but here's a little video on how you could use it. Now, let's say that we have somebody who we want to make a second playlist for, maybe a husband or wife, or maybe you're uh, sharing this uh, watch with somebody who's in assisted living, like my mom, and can't do it herself. So we might want a playlist made and all ready to go. So basically what we're going to do is a little bit different. We're going to find the particular idea that we want, and I'll show you this again with maybe just a little bit different idea. So if we wanted to go to uh, chronic, we could go down to chronic fatigue and we could touch that one. Now this is a little bit different right here. Instead of putting it in the heart folder, you have to touch the menu bar. And then you very carefully go down. This one just goes one at a time and you'll see add to playlist. So you'll touch add to playlist and then you'll see your three playlists there. So we're gonna add this to playlist number two. And when I touch that, it opens up and it says chronic fatigue, yes or no. So you're gonna to touch yes, and it's now gives you a signal it's added to playlist number two. Now, if I want to remove this, I have to touch, go down one arrow, and it will give me a choice of which playlist. And then it will say remove from playlist, yes. So that's a pretty easy one there. Now, if you want to add it to playlist three, not too hard now. You're going to add that to playlist number three. If you want to take it out, you're going to remove from the playlist right in those particular areas. So playlist two and three go through the home screen and you arrow down to add to playlist or remove from playlist. Hope that helps you. So uh, basically, you can see I haven't uh, caught up with this a little bit, but I now have about 75 teaching segments about the Wave Watch. So we're kind of winding down for today. Just remember that there are so many choices on uh, the Facebook Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics. They're live. And the last time I was there, I could still type in the a category or an idea that I wanted, and it would bring up the video for me. We have lots of videos on Rumble, and we have lots of videos on YouTube. So there's different ways that you can see this um, and learn about using the Wave Watch or share it with others. So I really appreciate you coming on today very, very much. Thank you for coming. Any other questions or anything that we could? Well, we can take any other questions we've got. I will drop the Rumble links in the uh, chat on the webinar and don't forget if you want to nominate a veteran that link is there and um, we just got a question can we have more than three playlists uh, if you want no, to but i have had people put about 80 things in their playlist you know so you can play them in several different ways and I did want to make a comment, too, on that last little video that I showed. Uh, it was an older version of the watch. So the new version may be just a little bit simpler, you know, but that's the idea. You do have to touch the you do not touch the heart when you are putting it in playlist two or three. You have to touch the menu bar and then find add to playlist. I think it's very uh, easy that way. But I hope everyone got the gist of that. All right. Well, this is one of the first times that I've had just a few minutes uh, uh, before uh, well, the hour. So we're a little bit shorter today. Yeah, I think we've got, I think every we're good. People just saying thank you. And uh, yeah, so glad you learned a lot. Thank you, everybody. Rob, great to see you. And we'd love to get together soon. And yeah, everybody happy. Thank you for joining. And don't forget, let's work on having a merry and bright. And that's by reaching out and touching people and being compassionate and maybe, say, you know, sharing some information that you have and getting everybody's frequencies up, you know, all kinds of things that we can do. Get it, get people outside, have a snowball fight, you know. All right. Thank you for coming on today. Really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, everybody. Take care.